Since the release of Zoom new whiteboard on April 18th, 2022, there's been so much going on. So now we have the new, new, new Zoom whiteboard. So many new features have been released since then, almost like Zoom were listening to me, and fixing all the weak points I've been highlighting. In this video, I'll be focusing only on the new stuff, like templates or infinite canvas, finally. You can always watch my other video for a thorough tutorial, or download the full whiteboard comparison sheet from my website. Links are in the description below. But did actually Zoom fix all of their weak points? Well, some they did, but they're still struggling with others, and more about that later in the video. So let's go explore the new Zoom whiteboard features. I'm running a free version of Zoom on my MacBook Pro. As usual, make sure you are on the latest Zoom version. The whiteboard on the web client has more features. Reason why now I'll go straight to the web client. To actually access the whiteboard, you have to click at the top right. The first big change that we notice is that there are now templates available. For the time being, there are 11 templates, but I'm sure Zoom will release more in the future. Let's have a look at a couple of them and at their style and graphics. They are all pretty simple, and in a way they resemble to those of Microsoft Whiteboard. They are not competing with the great templates of Miro or Mural, but all in all I have to say, way to go, well done Zoom. Let me choose for example this pros and cons template, and click on use this template. Let's now start exploring the features, and look for things that have changed in the latest versions. There's a pen with three different thicknesses, a highlighter and eight predefined available colors. Let me try to draw something random here at the bottom. If I keep drawing downwards, the whiteboard is expanding. This is the second major update of the Zoom whiteboard. In the earlier version, the canvas was limited, whereas now the whiteboard has an infinite canvas. Let me delete this thing, and now if I click on the selection tool, I find also the hand icon that allows me to move around the board. And if I keep drawing and going down, the canvas is still expanding. I have to say the experience is not as smooth as for the other whiteboards, in the sense that when you draw and push the boundaries of the viewable canvas, then the canvas expansion is not as fluid. And let's try to do the same on the left. The other thing I don't like so much is that you have to draw or place objects outside of the viewable canvas boundaries, because if you use the pan tool and try to push the boundaries of the canvas, you're not able to do it. So now that Zoom Whiteboard have an infinite canvas, have they removed their pages? Well, actually not. You can still create up to 12 pages. And to do so, you just click here at the bottom and then on plus to create a new page. Let's go back to our first page. Let's move on to the shape icon. And here we find the third improvement. At the beginning, Zoom Whiteboard only had four shapes, whereas now we have 14 basic shapes and 12 flowchart shapes. Let's insert a rectangle, and like before, we can insert text in the shape and format it. Here we see another small improvement in the text formatting options, and that's the strike through formatting option that was not there before. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that also the bullet point list and the number list are new. So let's try them out. Well, actually, the bullet point is very small, and it doesn't seem I can increase its size nor format it in any other way and the same applies to the numbered list. Nothing has changed in the background color, in the transparency, and in the outline. But now we can change the shape on the go to one of the new available shapes. Like before, if we click on this dot and we drag it, we can duplicate the shape and connect the two. I don't want this new shape, so let me undo. Actually, undoing removes the connector and the text that I've inserted in the shape. That actually doesn't remove the second shape. So there's a bug there that Zoom has to fix, I think. Let me change then the second shape to an arrow, drag the handles to resize it, and let's give it a red color. The line feature is the same as before, with the option for simple line, single arrow or double arrow, and by connecting it to one of these dots, then we can transform it into a connector. As we saw already in my previous video, one nice thing of Zoom connectors is that they can be formatted. We can choose the thickness, the type, the beginning and end, the color, and we can also add a text label. You'll learn more about it in my other complete review video. Let me also add a double arrow and make it green. And let's look at the additional options, which don't seem to have changed. Just copy, paste, duplicate, bring forward or backward or delete. If you're finding this video useful and want to help me grow my channel, please consider subscribing and hit the like button so more people will have the chance to watch this video. Thank you. Let's move on to the next feature that is sticky notes. There are eight preset colors available. Text can be formatted with the options that we've seen before already. And if we select 
auto size and then enlarge the sticky note, the text will adapt to its size. And again, if I click on this dot and then drag, I'll duplicate the object and link the two with a connector. The next feature is templates. We've seen already that it's a new one and you have the options to access templates also from a whiteboard, meaning that you're not limited to using one template when you set up the whiteboard, but you can add and use multiple templates also after you've opened the whiteboard. We can add images, but we've seen already this feature. I'll now add my remote working hero logo. Also, the eraser has not changed, meaning that we can only do stroke erasing, whereas pixel by pixel eraser is not available. Here we have the undo and redo options, the pages we've seen, and that's about it for this panel. At the top right, we have the sharing options, which also have not changed, and the comments option. Also, comments have remained the same, meaning that you can place a comment anywhere on the board and that other users can reply to that comment. However, something that is still missing in my mind is that comments can't be linked to an object. All other additional options have remained the same. Exporting is possible in PDF and PNG format, and you can still lock the board. A pretty useful feature when you want to temporarily remove viewing access for everyone but owners. You can lock the whiteboard, and then when you're ready to collaborate again, you can unlock it. So let's move on from the other option that is accessing the board from within a meeting. I'll launch a new Zoom meeting and click on whiteboards. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, the pen is the same. I have three thicknesses. Let's do the same experiment as before, and I'll try to draw a vertical line. Well, if I push the boundaries of the canvas, the canvas is not following the pen. It looks like the whiteboard has a limited canvas, but actually if I use the pen tool, you can notice that the canvas is infinite. It's just a bit confusing how the drawing tool behaves differently between the different versions. However, no big deal, and I think this will soon be fixed. Moving on to the shapes, all new ones are there, and we have the same formatting options. Let's now add text, but here we see that the strike through option is not available. And also we don't have the bullet or numbered list, so this is definitely a difference. Let's now insert the sticky note, and let's write some text in it. Again, the text formatting options are limited, and it doesn't seem we can choose the font size. And when we make the sticky note larger, the text will keep its original size. Again, another significant difference compared to the web client application. The stroke eraser is the same, undo, redo, sharing options are also the same, whereas we have fewer additional options. In particular, we don't see the option to lock the board, but that's understandable, because if you're using a board during a Zoom meeting, it's probably because you want to collaborate with your colleagues, so it wouldn't make much sense to lock the whiteboard. The next new feature is who knows, but as soon as there will be one, make sure you'll find it here in this next video.